Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com. I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale scratch built Cadillac gauge V100 XM706 armored car. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the front area here of the build and at this point here, the front of the model is completed. And with the completion of the front, that means the entire side portion and the rear area as well of this build is done. So there's going to be quite a bit of info to talk about with all these new detail fittings that were added to this model. So sit back, relax, and enjoy because there's going to be a bit of info flying right at you. Okay, so starting the video off, here we have a very intricately detailed bit of equipment that is really important for the front end of the V100, and that is the front winch. The winch is an iconic bit of detailing present on this pattern of vehicle, and it's one thing that once added to the model is really going to flesh out and complete the front bow section. The components that you see here on the table are a pre-production sample of the new EastCoastArmory.com 1-6 scale V100 front winch kit. The actual production units are going to be similar to the parts that you see here on the table, but those are going to be printed in the standard white nylon material as opposed to the resin and FDM material that are found on the pre-production sample. This was just done for a way for me to save a little bit of cost in research and development and also to double check to make sure that the parts are where they need to be dimensionally and also design wise. So if there's any sort of hiccups that emerge from this set over here, the changes are going to be made and those are going to be present on the actual production units that are found on the ECA catalog. However, with the parts over here, you really get a good idea on what the actual set is going to be consisting of. Before I bring the camera in closer, I do want to give a special shout out to a certain military vehicle collector out there who has a real V100 armor car. And with his help, I was able to see the interior setup of the winch, which allowed me to design the set that we have here. So with that little quick thanks out of the way, let's go ahead and bring the camera in closer to see exactly what I designed in this following set. So the first thing I want to point out is the main cluster that we have here. This is a single printing and consists of the housing as well as the winch mechanism itself. Everything is 3D printed. Now this one here it's 3D printed in a resin. For the actual production unit this will be the standard white nylon material. So that's the only real difference between this one and the production unit bearing any sort of other changes that need to be made as the construction continues. What the way this set is designed is an all-encompassing set and it's intended so that you can install this unit as a drop-in installation from the outside of the vehicle. You just carefully mark out where the unit gets fitted and you just simply drop this unit into place. Once glued in place you now have all of the winch detailing all set ready to go. On the main housing we have all of the intricate fittings that would have been present on the real one. So we have the main box which the winch is contained in. We have some winch motor details which are present here. We have some fastener details right there on the end, and we also have some reinforcement details. The most notable detail is with the front sections here and here. This is something that was taken directly off of the real example, and if you'll notice it has these two protective round guards, I guess is the best way to put it, and they are made from stampings on the real unit. And you can see they have the appropriate geometry found on the ECA set. In addition to that, the top and the bottom portions have their well beads, which is again, as per the real vehicle, as well as the well beads located on the sides. You'll also see that everything is pre-drilled out and ready to go for the actual pins, which are going to be installed momentarily. From the main housing takes us to the remainder of the components and on this example here these are currently made from a filament based print. Again this is only for the pre-production sample. The real production units these will be made out of the actual white nylon. This over here is the actual winch spool itself. It is a two piece assembly on this example right here. This was done primarily because of the FDM prints. For the actual nylon prints, this is going to be a single piece, so that's one difference. But as you can see, it's going to drop into this section right over here, and this is where the cable will actually be spooled when the time comes. Over here, bypassing those two rollers, we have a plethora of small pins. Now, a lot of these are just duplicates in case I need to make some adjustments or changes to them. And these are going to be used to pin the actual spool together as one piece. There's some geometry here to to illustrate that. 
and the other pins are going to be used for the rollers. The rollers are on the front section over here, and these are intended to act as exactly what the name implies. They are rollers. These on the real unit would roll out when the cable snags on them and just prevents the cable from getting stuck. On this example, again, they are made out of that FDM material. The production ones are going to be much more refined. On this example over here, it seems that there's a little bit of deformation right here on the bottom portion due to the way they are printed. This is something I am going to have to clean up. Uh, I may even just replace these outright with some made from aluminum or possibly resin just for this example over here. It depends on how much work it's going to require to clean up these prints. For the other pieces, they are fine because they are mostly internal, but for these ones here, yeah, I'm still on the fence on whether or whether or not I'm going to keep them, but we'll see how that pans out. While on the topic of the winch, the next bit of equipment that's going to be added to the model this time that is winch related is with the top cover hatch that we have here. One cool thing about the V100 is that the winch is accessible from the outside portion of the vehicle via this axis hatch. The hatch itself is just, you know, pretty simple hatch. It's just a square piece with some hinges, a handle, and a locking tab. The locking tab is on the outside of the vehicle for, you know, obvious reasons to get access to it. It makes things a bit easier. The lock mechanism is the same mechanism that has been seen on other hatches that are found on this vehicle, such as the engine hatch and the two crew hatches specifically. The hatch on this model here is actually a new 3D printed component on the EastCoastArmory.com product line, and it is actually a functional component. However, the one on this model here is actually static and is non-functional. As you can see, it is a single printing. The reason why this one here is not going to be functional is because on the model, the front was reskinned as I touched upon in an earlier video. And in order to make the piece function, I would have to do a lot more body work in order to get everything hollowed out and fit it in place. So rather than going with that approach on this build, I'm simply just going to have the hatch glued on the outside as just external detailing only. And the piece here is going to be perfectly suffice for that. That's why for this particular example, it is a single printing. Also, it's printed in a resin type material. The actual production units are going to be made in the standard white nylon, like I've touched upon on several other components already on this build. However, even though this one is a static piece, the CAD files that were used to make this one are identical. The hinges, the pins, all of that are identical on the functional version. And this one here, they were just oriented in a way to make it a single printing as opposed to the production pieces, which they will be separate. So after a little bit of work, you can see the winch components going through their assembly. So far, I've utilized all of the printed components that were mentioned before, and there was no need to fabricate new ones. I just polished up the FDM parts that I mentioned earlier. So right now nothing is permanently installed yet because at this point here I'm ready to strip everything down, get it primed and painted, and then once that's complete I could spool up the cable on the inside and get this entire unit inserted onto the model, but more on that remains to be seen. So here you get to see how the component works. As I mentioned before, the rollers on the top and bottom are functional. Right now the bottom one is not fitted in place because once this snaps in I'm not going to be able to take it out, so this is going to be taken care of after the piece is fully painted. One other thing to mention is that I'm going to have to revise the design slightly where this single pin for the bottom is actually going to be split in half and shortened because I'm going to need an extension spring that I made over here on the inside which will be able to flex inward during the installation but once I hit that magic sweet spot here of those two holes the spring is going to force the pegs outward thus locking the unit into place much along the lines as you would see like with the detent. But obviously this is a permanent type of thing and I can't really do that at this time. So that's gonna be done after everything is painted and weathered. The winch mechanism itself is there. You can see how it's gonna basically work. Right now, all that remains once the piece is fully painted is I'm going to drill out one of these small little holes over here because this small little hole is gonna be used to drive a metal pin through which will secure the pulley mechanism to the winch mechanism. And another hole is going to be drilled in this side over here, and that's actually going to be the location where I'll be able to spool up the cable, which I have right over here, into the appropriate location. For the cable, I'm going to be utilizing picture frame cable. I like this cable because it's nice and thin, but it's also quite flexible, and it doesn't want to expand so much. So that's why I'm going to be trying to go with this one here, or that's the idea right now. This remains to be seen. Right now, I'm just going by... Uh, sh uh, sheer um, assumptions, so we'll see how this pans out as the video progresses. And here's the winch system 
fully painted, weathered, and is actually ready for installation. The unit ran to a slight little snag. I had that spring winch mechanism installed and I was playing around with it. Unfortunately, I tugged a little too hard and I broke the stem. And since everything is pinned in place, I already had the spool already done. Uh, for this one, I decided just to abandon that feature and just build it in the static configuration that we have here. The unit still looks the part. It looks absolutely awesome. And you can still see all that really cool detailing on the inside here, specifically once it gets fitted to the model. Um, on the fence, if I'm going to keep the spool spring feature on the component, but you know, we'll see how that progresses as time goes on. To install the component to the model here, we can see the front portion of the V100 and I carefully marked the location where the winch has to go and I cut out the little square section. The unit will then just simply drop directly into place like you see here and once installed, presto, you have the winch detailing fully completed. I might as well go ahead and get the installation on camera. So I'm just going to take some super glue, add a nice little bead on the ends over here. What's nice about the set the way it's designed is that it's self leveling. So you just add the glue on these two sections and then just drop it into its pro proper location. And once fitted in place, hold it there for a couple moments, wait till the super glue gets a little bit of a bite on it, and then you're good to go. All set. So with the winch installed and out of the way, this leads us to the remainder of fleshing out the front detailing. And this is gonna bring us to one of my personal favorites, which are the headlights. The headlight clusters on the V100 are really cool because this vehicle utilized the exact same pattern of headlights, which are found on lots of other American AFV of the period. Such noteworthy examples would be the M4882 Patton, the M60, as well as even the M551 Sheridan. And that's just scratching the surface. There's a bunch of others that, you know, are slipping my mind at the moment, like the, uh, oh, the M107 that <laughs> utilizes these as well. These headlights are the ones that we see here on the table, and these were developed, and I carefully designed these, and these are now a newly listed component found on the EastCoastArmory.com catalog. The set is all-encompassing with the components that we have here. Now, I just want to also point out that this is the pre-production sample. Since these parts were printed, I went ahead and made some modifications to them, and those are going to be found on the actual production units, and I'll touch upon that in a moment. But starting with the sets takes us to the components here on the right. So I'll start from the right and work my way to the left. Here we have the actual headlight housing itself. Now, note, the headlight housings are all segmented and they are all a multi-part assembly which means you get some excellent detailing on them and the second thing is or I should say the second reason why this was done was not just for detail fidelity but also for functionality if one so desires. So here we have the headlight housing. Note it is a hollow printing and you will see that it is subdivided in several sections and this was done by design. You see, this set was intended for use for anyone that not only wants the detailing, but also wants to make them work. If you're the type of person who likes to ring up LEDs inside your model, this set here is already designed for your application. The reason why we have this segmented section out is because this isolates each of the cavities over here, so you can have four LEDs found in this set in this cluster. This is done for both day and nighttime running. So we have one LED here for white light, the other one for the blackout light, and then two others also that are present on the, the piece itself. The part also has all the holes that are integrally printed out on this component here, so you could plumb the wiring for all of the LEDs for you to snake them out of the bottom portion that we have right here on the lower area. Now that's just on the outside, or I should say on the inside. We also see a nice deep lip over here, so we'll make the insertion of the detail face here a lot more positive. And on the back portion, we have some more detailing that would be present on the real unit. We have this small little raised area found right here on the back portion, which is present on the real examples that I was studying. And we can also see the detail work found on the bracket. The mounting bracket on this particular example is intended for use on the V100 in that it's it's integrally printed on this base section. However, I could easily just omit the base and just have the unit as a standalone headlight in case someone was, oh, I don't know, working on a patent or anything along those lines. But on the mounting bracket itself, you can see all of the geometry and the detail fasteners that are present.
On the main base, you will also see the welds for the V100 integrally printed on. Now, for the base, the one on this example over here was, again, the pre-production sample, and I saw some shortcomings with it when it actually came time to fitting it to the model. When I was designing this piece, I had the wrong angle of the bow configured, so the piece here is at the wrong geometry. I went ahead and made the appropriate changes, and you can see it on this other printed component that is right here in my hand. This one here is what's going to be integrally printed on the production units of this set that are found on the catalog. For these two examples here, I'm gonna have to amputate the printed on base, and then once deleted, I can then just secure it onto the appropriate one when the time does come. But with the piece off, you can see the geometry found in this component over here, and this is again lifted directly from the real example of the V100 that I studied in person. So that's it for the main housing. This now leads us to the lens insert covers. So the lens covers, you will see, have all of the detailing present. And this is true for the geometry of the part. Note it's not in a straight angle. It's got a small little wedge shape to it. We have the actual casting marks, because on the real one, these are actually made from cast aluminum. So all of the casting marks are present. We have the rigidity braces. We have the hood here for the blackout light. Note it is scalloped on the inside as it is on the real one. The blackout light does have the appropriate geometry to that as well, as well as the bottom light over here. And we also have the small little fasteners that are found in the locations along with their rigidity blisters found on the ends. Basically, I really went to great lengths to try to copy as many details as possible from the real example to transition them into the small scale, one six scale counterpart that we have right here. Also on this sprue, we have the other two little indicator lights that are found on the vehicle. These pieces here are also standard USAFV, and I believe I have them listed on the M151 MUT catalog page. But these ones here are specifically for the V100 in that they have that small little bracket that's again pre-welded, and the fastener is also present as well. Note these pieces are hollow. So again, if you want to mount an LED into these ones too, you also have that opportunity. On the mounting bracket, we have both the fastener, the washer, and even the roll pin. The small little roll pin is there on the real one to prevent the piece from pivoting up and down, which it, it just secures it in place in the static position that you see here. All these details are again integrally printed on the ECA unit and no work is required. On the back portion here, we have the little rubber end connector. Now, there is a small little wire that is going to be supplied with the set. It's not present on the table here, but rest assured it is supplied with the set, and you will see what that looks like after everything is fully completed. And then the last bit are this little sprue that we have here, which is made from HD 3D printed material. The reason why I went with this material is because it is translucent, which is the perfect medium that you want for lenses. So on the real unit, you would have a white lens, a blackout lens, and then you would have the other two lenses. And if you notice, everything here is on a single piece drop-in runner. So no other fiddling is required. You just simply snip it off the sprue and drop it into the back section here of the unit. And once everything is installed, you will have the appropriate detailing ready to go. Also on the clear sprue, we have the lenses for the indicators. And these ones are actually gonna be painted orange, but again, I'll touch upon that as the build goes on. And on that note, one of these units here are gonna be painted with black on the reverse end, again, which would be true to form to the real unit. In addition to these components, I also went ahead and tooled up the siren. And this is definitely a bit of equipment that I had a lot of fun tooling up. The siren that we have here is the standard post-war US military AFV siren. These type of sirens are still in use today. The unit that we have here is another new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and it's listed on several catalog pages. It's listed on the V100 page, the soft skin page, but I also went ahead and listed a version of this on the M26 Pershing page, and I believe the Sherman page for that matter. The Sherman and the, I should say the M26 Pershing version is the exact same unit, but without the bracket that we have here, because this bracket here is specific for the M26 Pershing. I'm sorry, for the V100 armor car. For the one for the Pershing, it, that piece is omitted and just basically looks like this. So you are going to have to fabricate your own little bracket for this piece to connect to. However, the detailing on here is still 
obviously what you're going to be looking for. The detailing on this component was lifted from a real siren that I actually have in my collection. So when I was tooling up this part here, I had the real siren right there in front of me, and I was able to take every single bit of detailing found on the real one and transition it over into the 1-6 scale counterpart. And you can see that coming through where we have the interior portion of the baffles on the siren. We have the distinctive cap section that we have right here with those oval cutouts. We have here the flange part. And note on the flange part, we have reversing rivets where on this side here, we have rivets going one direction. And on the other side here, you'll see what the rivets look like on the reverse direction. Note they are drilled out hollow as they are again on the real example. The back portion has the appropriate geometry to it. And we do have the two connection points for the wiring. As for the mounting bracket, the mounting bracket is again as realistic as I can possibly make in terms of geometry, with the washers, with the braces, everything is found on this example. And one thing that's nifty about the V100 version is that it is a single printing component. It's all done. Basically, you just take it out of the box, you mark where on the model it goes, and glue it to the model. Put some wires in it, and you are done. So, all of that is found on the ECA piece, and again, this is found on the ECA catalog. The next group of components that we have here on the table are the brush guards. These are obviously for the headlight clusters, and the ones you see here are just, again, lifted off of the real V100 that I was studying. It is a single 3D printing, and note the welds are integrally printed on, so basically you just mark where it needs to go and glue it onto the model. It does have three little pegs, so if you want to drill small little holes to index the component to plug in place, you can. Or you can simply just snip them off and glue them on flat. Whichever way works best for you, you can do so. The next thing I want to mention is with the face over here. One thing about the V100 is that I've seen most of the examples that have a mesh found in this section. However, there were also some that didn't have the mesh. So again, like I was mentioning in the V100 interview video where I did with the owner, these things, they were constantly fiddling with them and messing around with them in field. And so, you know, you had some examples that didn't have it at first. Then after a little bit of usage in country, they decided to go ahead and change some things around. And the mesh was some of those changes. Eventually, the, the pieces, I believe, came from the factory with the mesh work in place. So, again, this is something to consider. On this build here, I'm on the fence if I'm going to add the mesh or not for this particular example. Like I touched upon with the rear tail... Uh, with the real tail lights is that the model that I'm depicting is more or less like not a early production version of the V100 but it's definitely one of the earlier units due to some of the early type fittings that are found on this example such as such things would be the lack of the deflector found on the rear tower section so that water wouldn't come in when the vehicle would forward as well as also the pattern of tail lights but uh, so for this one here for the brush guards, eh, I'm still on the fence on whether or not I'll put the mesh on. We'll see how that pans out as the build continues. So as I touched upon before, the bases that are integrally printed on these two examples here are the wrong shape and need to be amputated in order for me to just assemble it and fit it to the model. On these two examples here, this is going to be amputated with the mill. The mill does an excellent job with removing just the right amount of material once everything is fully set and calibrated. Here you can see one of the other examples, and the bottom base has been thoroughly milled away. And it does an excellent job with this type of procedure like I just mentioned. You can theoretically do the same thing on a belt sander. However, the belt sander will do the job. But it is funny to point out that this material here is actually really, really good at being abrasive resistant, but a belt sander will definitely win in the end. But just because of ease of setup, you know, the mill is definitely the, the choice I'm going to be going with. And presto, the piece is cleaned off. Now, like I also mentioned before, the actual production units, this will not be necessary. And this is, again, only done on these pre-production ones here because I need to fit them to my V100 model. So with the parts cleaned off, it's now time to get them assembled. I just wanted to briefly show this on video. So here we have the lens, or I should say the lens cover, and here go the lens inserts right here in my hand. And like I stated before, the installation is super easy where they just drop directly into place with no sort of 
sanding or filing or anything required, just drop them in and plug it together. And your headlight cluster is now fully assembled. The next and final bit of detailing that's going to be mounted to the model at this time are the side view mirrors. The side view mirrors on the V100 are basically the same side view mirrors that are found on other American AFV from World War II all the way up until, well, really today. They didn't really change the design all that much, probably for good reason. So the components that you see on the table are another new addition to the ECA product line. However, they are going to be made in a different material compared to the ones that you see here. These ones here are a resin type print while the production ones are the white nylon material. What is going to be the same though are with the mirror inserts. The sets are designed to have these mirrors that are installed in place. There's currently a film, a protective film on the mirror here and then once everything is installed obviously you peel that off and the piece is good to go. However, the units are fully detailed where they have the back stamp detailing present along with the fasteners. There's that little ball joint, which on the real one will allow it to pivot even more than compared to the one on the model here, but the detailing is there. On the inside portion, it is hogged out. Well, this one is specifically because with the way this one's printed, it was flush, and so I had to go ahead and carefully turn this down on the lathe in order to get the hollowed out dish. But the actual production ones with the other fabrication method will have these integrally printed on, so the pieces are ready to go out of the box. The remaining bit of detailing is the stem which has, again, the cover cap detailing, the fastener detailing, all of the crimped tube detailing, which would be, of course, found on the real one, are present on this unit. The bracket detailing is also there. And this one here just has this little tube type structure as this is what's gonna stick out of the model's deck, and then the piece will just plug into it. Also, at this time, I want to mention that a similar set was also tooled up for the Sherman tank, and that utilizes basically many of the same parts that we have here, namely the stem, the lens insert, I believe is a little bit different with the stamping, but it's much along the skies as this one over here, and that one is listed in the SLS material, and I do have pictures of the actual production units found on the ECA website. So, that one is a purely for Sherman tanks in one six scale, and but you know the same one here is found for the soft skin. And here are all the components now fitted to the model. This would include the lights, the smaller light, the brush guards, the siren, the top hatch, as well as yes, even the side view mirrors. At this point, all these components have been fitted to the model. So starting with the brush guard, as you can see, I am going to model this one with the meshwork in place. However, the meshwork is not mounted to the brush guard permanently at this time. The reason for that is because, well, quite simply put, I need to still get access to the clear cover caps for both the small light as well as the main headlight cluster, and this can easily be done when the mesh is not secured on the vehicle. So what's going to happen is that the model is going to progress and head off into paint and completion, and at the very tail end of the build, one of the last things that I will install permanently at that point is the mesh work, because once the lenses are properly painted, the wiring is all plumbed together, and the cluster is fully completed. At that point there, the mesh work can simply just be adhered to the location that we see here, thus completing the look. Oddly enough, the same exact procedure was also needed on the 135th scale Hobby Boss rendition of the V100 kit that I built a little while ago. As I just touched upon, the unit will have some wiring detailing emerge from the siren as well as a small light here and they will all converge on the rear portion of the mount where a hole has been drilled in and then all the wires simply just go into that one source. This is going to be the detailing that gets added at the very tail end of the build for the simple reason that, well, I'm going to be using real black rubber wiring and there's no point fitting it to the model this time because it's just going to get hit with the paint when it comes time for the paintwork and it'll look really cool if the wires were in their natural black coloring. So this is the type of detail that's going to be added at the very tail end of the build. It's also at this time where you can see what the headlight cluster looks like once fitted to the revised bottom base that we have here. As you can see, it perfectly contours the front shape of the hull much better compared to the original attempt that was found on the pre-production sample. Along similar lines you get to see what the siren looks like fitted in place. There's nothing that needs to be done to this piece over here with the exception of the addition of the wiring details which again are going to be added towards the tail end of the build. But as you can see the siren just gives a lot of detailing to this area of the model and it's just a dead ringer for the real unit. 
Carry on takes to the winch access hatch cover lid. As you can see, all the details have been fitted in place. And once I figured out exactly where the component goes, it just simply just dropped in without any sort of problems. With the way the piece is fully detailed, once everything is painted and weathered, it definitely does a fantastic job with mimicking the detailing which would be present on the real vehicle. Moving further back takes to the side view mirrors. As you can see, they are fully positionable in many angles and degrees, just along the lines as the real one. At this time, you'll see that there is no mirror insert fitted in place. This is obviously, again, one of the last bits of detailing that gets mounted to this section here at the very tail end of the build. So as the build continues, you will eventually see the mirrors drop directly in place. On this one here, you may notice a little bit of red putty work that has been added to the side sections. This was with the way this one was printed. It was with that rest of material. And because of that, there were some air bubbles or some kind of misprint areas found on the rim over here. Easily polished away with some red putty and some bodywork, but again, the production units, this will not be the case because it is using a different procedure for printing that's more conducive for this type of detailing. So, as you can see, with the addition of these parts here, this is a great job with fleshing out and completing the front portion of the vehicle. And, like I stated in the last video, this here was the last section to be worked on in order to complete the side detailing of this particular model. From this point onward, the build is going to shift to the top deck where I'm going to be tooling up the remainder of the top deck details prior to jumping onto the turret. So in the next video, you're probably going to see the bow hatches getting fleshed out, the rear escape hatch getting fleshed out, along with the engine hatches with the Pagoda. All that information will be discussed in the next video. Right now, I am working on all those things in CAD, so good things will definitely be coming shortly down the pipeline. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale scratch-built Cadillac Gauge V100 armored car. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, being other 1-6 scale project update videos like this one over here, to the smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted on this channel. Another way to keep a loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, along with photographs of the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on this channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you all again on the next one. Till then. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this King Tut. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying, I'm too used to saying that now.